Thanks for checking out this movie review video. This is for the 2022 film Prey on Hulu, and yes, that's the new Predator film, which I feel like it's been a little bit since we got a Predator film, or maybe it's just because I want to forget a bunch of the other Predator films. Although the one with Lawrence Fishburne, pretty good, I will say that much. I didn't even see the last one that came out by, um, uh, what's his name, something black, I don't remember his name, uh, but anyway, I heard it wasn't that great. But this, I will say, I think a lot of people are going to enjoy Prey. Now, like I said, it's on Hulu. It is only on Hulu. I don't think it's getting a theatrical release or anything, or maybe it is, but pretty sure it's just on Hulu. Anyway, a Prey is directed by Dan Trachtenberg, who also did 10 Cloverfield Lane, which I heard great things about, have not checked that out, and I really do need to. It's been on my list, so go ahead and put it in the comments. Is it one I need to bump up my list because it's that good? Let me know. Also did an episode of The Boys and an episode of Black Mirror, which is one of the best shows ever made, in my opinion. Black Mirror, phenomenal. Written a uh, story, actually, by Trachtenberg, and then Patrick a Eisen, Eisen uh, wrote the script and also provided some of the story. And Eisen also wrote some scripts for Wayward Pines, Kingdom, Jack Ryan Show, and Treadstone. There had been rumors that this film was going to be PG-13, potentially. Thankfully, you can breathe a sigh of relief. It is an R-rated film, and they do have plenty of gore to it. There are a few kills where they cut away from, which I kind of don't understand. I feel like if you're going to go with an R and you're going to show some like graphic scenes, show every graphic scene. Like Go all the way. Show all the kills instead of being like, then this person died, but we're not seeing it. But... There are good kills in this. There is a good amount of blood, both human and predator. Uh, so, yeah. And I love the predator blood, by the way. Like, the fluorescent green predator blood has always been a super cool thing to me. And it is used to amazing effect in this film. There's a decent amount of it. And it just looks gorgeous within the film. I mean, the film itself just looks gorgeous, to be honest. It is shot extremely well. Directing, cinematography, the music, the acting, like all the technical components of this film are really, really well pulled off. It is super polished, and I think people are really going to enjoy that aspect of it. Quick synopsis about it. I don't want to give away too much. Basically, it's set in um, Amer in the United States before it's like the full-on United States. It's before like full Western expansion, but the French are there. Um, so Native American focus though in the film and it's, um, yeah, it's just kind of focused on that time period and that setting. Therefore it is beautiful, uh, with the cinematography and the directing being so good and the way they really showcase the scenery there. It's gorgeous. It's just a beautiful film to look at. Like you can just take your time, just taking it all in to be honest and being like, this is beautiful nature right here. But then obviously there's horror and action and blood and guts thrown into the nature, which for horror fans like me and you, super awesome. Love it. It's a setting that you wouldn't actually expect for a Predator movie. It's kind of new in that sense, like time period wise, not like actual like setting settings because the original Predator was in a jungle, also beautiful scenery. So it's a little bit similar ish in that sense, like taking in a lot of scenery and being very like close to nature. But um, the fact of what the time period it's set, I think, really does open a lot of possibilities. It's a de definitely a different take on Predator because a lot of people would be like, oh, there's a new Predator film coming out. What are you going to do with it? Well, I mean, I think this is one of the answers. Like, this is what you can do with it. When you have people who are creative enough and who really apply themselves with writing a decent script, you can get stuff like this. You can get new ideas out of old franchises. And honestly, I'd be down to see another one of these, to be honest, uh, and see what they would do with it. Not necessarily keep it in the same, you know, time period and everything and setting, but, you know, go somewhere else. Have the same people attached, same director, same writers. That would be interesting. They do paint the hunting skills of Native Americans as kind of superhero level, unfortunately. I think that was a little bit of a mistake you can still get to where they were going with this film without having that little bit of ridiculousness in there. Like, there's literally a point, and this is, doesn't ruin any, any, anything because it's in the very beginning of the film, there's literally a point where one of the Native American males, it, like, shoots 
a hawk out of the sky that is like way far away with just like a regular bow and arrow and i'm just like this is ridiculous and and there are some scenes kind of with the main character who's running around with a hand axe who's doing some unbelievably too unbelievably uh athletic moves with this axe and then there's something else that happens with that axe like a modification to it later in the film that is cool but it's very ridiculous and over the top so i kind of don't like those aspects because initially they set the film up as being very believable to be in this time period but it's a minor gripe i think it's kind of trying to capitalize maybe a little bit too much on the popularity of superhero action scenes because there is some of that echoed in the scenes with fights with the predator but that also said it's enjoyable it's, those are very enjoyable scenes so you know i'm kind of in the middle on it again looks great amazing scenery the predator is introduced relatively early on but they then kind of take their time getting to the actual human encounters with the predator it is kind of this thing where the predator kind of like works its way up, you know, kind of works its way up the food chain to to a degree. And y you know that with a film like this, you can't just jump straight into the main character having like very meaningful or very dangerous run ins with the predator itself, at least not in a film like this. So they do wait for a while to actually get to that. And they jump between like the main character, what's going on with them and then also the Predator itself and where it's moving. So it does kind of work, though, because it feels like they're on different ends of this kind of, like, tract of land, and they're just kind of, like, slowly moving closer to one another, in a sense. So that does kind of work. Uh, as far as danger goes, there's a gradual building up to the Predator for the main character, which is basically kind of what I was talking about. Uh, the CGI in this does look good. It's not perfect, but for me like I don't think like any CGI ever really looks perfect the physics are not there like I don't know about you but when I see CGI in a film it's just the physics are always a little bit off it doesn't like you can tell it's not actually there um so that kind of ends up throwing me off um there is plenty of there's a lot of CGI in this to be honest but unfortunately they use CGI for the blood that's what I don't like. I really wish they would have gone the route of practical blood for this. Like, it's very cheap, you know, just red food coloring and caro syrup. That's all you really need to do, honestly. And it looks definitely good enough on screen. But another thing, the physics, they're not there. Like, when someone gets slashed and the blood flies, when it's CGI, it moves too slowly. It doesn't move properly as far as gravity goes. And it just takes me, personally, out of the film. It might not bother other people as much, but it, it does bother me. There are some cool kills in this, which obviously people would want for a Predator film, because obviously the Predator will kill, like that's their whole thing. They're a trophy hunter in essence. They just go around from planet to planet killing things because they want to be the apex Predator in the entire universe. I mean, it's, it's, it's a sport for them. The Predator itself is actually pretty cool, and it's well-designed. And this is one of the great things about the like any Predator film in the franchise. You can design your own Predator. Like, there, there's a rough, like, not a rough, but, like, there is a base that you need to kind of go off of, but it's especially as far as, like, the masks and a little bit, like, the facial features and kind of how they look, you can vary it because, as we all know, if you've seen enough of the Predator films, it's not one Predator it's like a whole population of predators, and each film is just like one or multiple of those predators. So they'll look different. So you can get some interesting, new, cool looks. And in this one, I think it is an interesting, cool, new look. I, I dig it. I dig it quite a bit. Um, there is an advantage that the main character comes up with uh, to take on the predator that I do think is ridiculous. Uh, not a fan of it. I'm obviously not going to say too much about it because... I want you to check it out. I want you to experience it. And if you want to, you can come back to this video and you can put some comments down there. What did you think about that particular advantage? I think you'll know what I'm talking about. It's much later in the film, obviously. The final fight in this is well done, I think, between the main character and the Predator itself. Uh, very engaging, very entertaining, plenty of blood. Love it. Um, yeah, it's a good action sequence within this film, which 
that's what you want for your payoff at the end of the film. That's 100% what you want and what you expect for a film like this. Again, they use the fluorescent green predator blood really well. It looks phenomenal in this film, and there's some of it used at the end of the film in particular that I really enjoyed, and I think a lot of people will enjoy as well. Great acting in this film. There is very good acting in this film, but my favorite performances of this film would be Amber Mid-Thunder and Dakota Beavers. Also, shout out to Dane Delig Deligero, Deligro, sorry, Dane Deligro, my apologies, who played the Predator. That's really hard because you can't speak. You know, you can't like emote with your face, you can't speak. It's all physical acting, which I feel like a lot of people probably in those roles take their cue from people like Kane Hodder, who kind of perfected that type of just just physical acting. Um, and Deligro, Deli, Deli sorry, does a really good job with it, in my opinion. Very imposing, very menacing, did an excellent job. But also Amber Mid-Thunder and Dakota Beavers, wonderful, wonderful acting in this. There is a definite theme of female struggle within a male-dominated society within this film. Uh, it's something that's been used in film a lot before. It works in this film, especially with the journey that you go on with the main character, who is female. And uh, it feels pretty good by the end of the film. Not going to say anything past that, but it's good. It works. Something that has always bothered me about predators, though. If they're all about the sport of hunting to be the top predator, why do they use their cloaking technology? Because isn't that cheating? That is 100% cheating. If you truly are trying to be like the apex predator and you're doing it for the sport of the hunt and everything, why are you making sure that, that your prey can't see you at all? Like, I understand, like, hiding and stuff like that, like... Because they can do that as well. Whoever you're going after or whatever you're going after can do the same thing. But using like cloaking technology, and I guess you could kind of like extend that out to things like their weapon tech and also like humans with guns and stuff like that. But like it, it, it's all about sport and it's all about just being the apex predator and being very like kind of primal in the fighting with predators. So the cloaking in particular to me just seems ridiculously unfair and that's just something that's always kind of bothered me with every single predator film i'm like if this is how they are why are they using this cloaking technology it seems like they're they're not really living by their own standards here you know what i mean but anyway that's just a small thing for me out of five stars with half stars in play i'm giving this a very solid three and a half star rating i do think people are going to enjoy it and obviously i want to hear what you think about it so Go ahead and put it in the comments. Did you love it, hate it, in between? And just give me like a sentence or two explaining why you did or did not like it or felt in eh about it. So we can talk about it. Um, do me a quick favor. Hit subscribe to my channel if you haven't already. That's your best way to repay me if you like this video or any video I've ever done. It is quick, painless, costs you nothing, and it keeps me motivated to keep doing these videos, which I do a lot of. And speaking of that, if you want to know when all my videos go up, you can hit the notification bell button on YouTube and then it'll let you know when I'm putting up my new videos, which I'm doing for a week. But regardless, I really thank you for taking your time to watch this particular video. And until next time, keep it brutal.